Hi, I'm Jessica Leonard, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And I'm here at CERN. I've been here since February 2007, and I'm working on my PhD research with the CMS experiment. And what's your PhD on? Um, so while I've been here at CERN, I've been working on two different things. Um, the first one is working with the CMS trigger. And the trigger is the part of the detector that tells us or that uh, picks out the interesting events. Uh, when the LHC turns on, there will be so many collisions happening that we won't be able to keep all of them. We will only want to pick out the interesting ones. And the trigger is the system that does that. Um, I've moved away from the trigger work now, and I'm working on my physics analysis, um, which basically means studying a particular process that will happen when two protons collide. Um, this process basically is the Drellian to two electrons process. So basically, when the protons collide and two electrons come out, um, those are the events that I will be studying. And what are you hoping to prove with this? Um, this isn't really to discover anything new. Uh, it's just it's the sort of process that has been seen before, but hasn't been seen by CMS yet, of course. Um, so we'll be looking at it and looking at the distributions of the energies of the electrons coming out, for example, um, and their direction. And it, it's just to make sure that we understand what we're seeing, um, that we know what the detector is doing. And I guess now's an exciting time to be at CERN with the restart of the LHC. Yeah. Um, does this mean that you have uh, data now to, to actually use? Well, I'm not using the data that we've gotten so far. But now that the LHC is turning on, we will be getting data very soon. Um, so it's really exciting. Um, and I think next year we'll have enough data for me to do my thesis. Okay. And what's the atmosphere like here at CERN? Just exciting in terms of the LHC restart. Um, and also, just being at CERN is really cool around all these other particle physicists, especially from such different countries. Um, I work with people from France, Germany, uh, Poland, Russia, etc. It's really cool. And you said that you worked on the trigger. Was this more hands on? Um, it's, it's involving, it involves both hands on work and computer coding work. Um, I spent time. Uh, helping to write simulation software that simulates the trigger um, and I also wrote software that helped uh, control the electronics and I also spent time actually installing the hardware, installing the electronics. And with the restart of the beam, has the trigger actually been activated now? Absolutely. It's been running even with the cosmic ray runs that we've been taking um, when the beam wasn't running. So. And has your group um, from the University of Wisconsin also been working on the trigger? And has it been working on anything else? Yes. Um, the University of Wisconsin group is in charge of uh, the regional calorimeter portion of the trigger, which uh, the calorimeter is one of the main detector subsystems. Um, and basically, when a particle goes into the calorimeter, you can see it, and you can see what happens. Um, and that's just part of the trigger, but the University of Wisconsin is in charge of that part. Um, they're also in charge of the NCAT muon system. Um, so if CMS is here, it looks like a big barrel. Um, the end caps are the pieces on the end, and muon detectors are on the end caps. So when, when a muon, which is a type of particle, goes out through the end cap, we can see that. Uh, the University of Wisconsin also is, in, uh, is involved in computing work. Um, we have a tier two computing center back at Wisconsin that's mainly run also by our group. And you mentioned that you were also doing physics analysis as part of your PhD studies. What, what does this involve? Um, basically, what physics analysis involves is um, taking data or simulated events, physics events, um, getting a whole bunch of them and running through a sort of uh, processing algorithm um, that uh, looks at the characteristics of the processes. So basically I would look at the energies of the particles coming out, their direction, um, things like that. And so to get to this stage in your career of being able to do physics analysis, hands-on um, work, software work, hands-on work with the trigger, 
What is your background? How, how have you arrived at this, this, this stage? Um, well, I majored in physics in undergraduate, and I also had a um, research opportunity while I was an undergraduate at Penn State um, to work at DAISY, which is the Accelerator Center in Germany, um, doing similar type of work. So um, that helped prepare me for what I'm doing now. Um, what would your words of advice be to younger physicists wishing to pursue a career at CERN or the University of Wisconsin? Um, I would say keep taking physics classes. You also need some math. Um, and also keep your eyes open for research opportunities. I mean, I had the opportunities while I was an undergraduate. Um, but there are also opportunities that are open for high school students if you're interested at that age. And how does it compare living on this side of the pond uh, in, in Switzerland or, or in France? I like it. Um, uh, it's very different in terms of the international atmosphere, which I already mentioned. Um, uh, this part of Switzerland and France also has very impressive mountains, which they don't have in Wisconsin. Um, and other than that, it's different, but it's not too different. I mean, the language is a big difference. And do you, um, what, what kind of things do you do in, in your free time? Um, I like to read, and I like to crochet, and I like to go hiking, which the mountains are very useful for. Um, I live in Tuareg, France, which is right at the base of the Jura Mountains, so I can walk out my door and go hiking when I feel like it. That's great. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I don't think so. That's all. Jessica, thank you so much for sharing your time and experience and knowledge. Thank you. Thanks.